Welcome to Authentic Living with Roxanne, a place where we have conscious conversations about things that really matter in our lives. And now, here's your host, Roxanne Derhage. Our interview last week was so good that we decided to turn it into a two-part series. If you missed last week, you'll find the link in the show notes. It's not mandatory that you listen, but we want to make sure that you don't miss out on this amazing conversation. Hi, everyone. It's uh, Roxanne Durhodge. How are you today? So glad you're tuning in yet again uh, to hang out with me with Authentic Living with Roxanne. Today, I have this amazing soul, Taco Ney who is uh, someone that's based out of Rome. And we had the privilege of meeting um, at an amazing women's conference uh, where I was exposed to Taco's work. And when I heard the kind of work that she was doing in the world, I thought it was so necessary that she come on and have a conversation with us. Taco is an author and an advocate for women's issues. And most recently, I would say she has put out something in the market that she's just released um, to help us understand the plight or the stories of women um, via some of the art in her in her book. So, Taco, thanks so much for coming on today. Thanks, Roxanne. It's a privilege to be here with you today. You said that women are poets, and I, I think, I mean, clearly these are powerful stories, Taco. Like, you know, um, in my career path, my path is definitely with women's issues, but I as a psychologist, I took a different path. And I, you know, um, one of my areas of specialties um, as when I practiced was um, complex PTSD and trauma, right? So, you know, um, dealing with sexual assault, sexual abuse of um, women, right? And, you know, nothing like humbling, uh, being put to your knees when you, you unfortunately, and I, you know, I was put there to obviously uh, guide women and help them heal, but very, very powerful, you know, um, when you hear these stories, you know, because there's a part of you that, that says why, right. And what, what, what can you do? And all I did was use, you know, what I knew to, to help healing, but you're right. It's so important going back to your whole concept of what can we do? And you said that in your book, women came up with solutions. Let's talk about this, right? Yes, we are. I think we have made changes, but there is definitely more need to rally so that we as women that are privileged, like you said, um, in in so many capacities, what are some of the solutions that the women in the book came up with that what are some of the top ones that you thought of or innovative ones that you think might be useful um, for people to know about? Well, education always you know, comes on top. Um, One of the contributors actually um, shared her life story because uh, she was explaining that she is from a polygamous family and her mother never went to school. But when she got married to the father who was already polygamous, um, she made it clear that she absolutely wanted her daughter to be educated. Uh, It was a fight, but at the end she got educated and now she's a woman leader in her country. And she was praising her mom, who although not having had the opportunity to go to school, understood the importance of education in a girl's empowerment. Mm -hmm. And for her mom, the most important was for her to be educated, not, not married. So education came before to finding a, a good husband, which is very unusual in that community. So education comes first. And one of my paintings talks about girls rising and it's, um, it's emphasizing the uh, importance of, of education. Uh, of course, uh, also in relation to the kind of work that I do, 
we know that there are many commitments, there are many legal frameworks, the laws, the gender provisions in national constitutions. The commitments are there. The issue is the practice. Mm -hmm. Because if you have high levels of illiteracy, women cannot even read about their rights. So you can have the system in place, but the the inability to read and to understand what is being said, may, women may not know that those rights are actually there and could be, you know, part of them if they don't even know what it's saying in those bills, like you're saying. Yes, and, and there are many communities where you have, you know, the, the, the first port of call for a woman in a remote community is the informal justice system because it's difficult for her to reach out to the city and financially it is also quite an investment to go to the city and get a lawyer and she may not even understand all the intricacies of mm -hmm. the justice system. So um, there are many places where you have this duality between the, you know, the, 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 the laws, the informal laws in place, the way that communities deal with certain issues and, and the law. Mm -hmm. So um, just to say laws are good, policy documents are good, but we should really make sure that the impact is felt by rural women, you know, in, in the small villages. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the, uh, some of the uh, solutions were also about uh, this global sisterhood or local sisterhood, the mentoring of women that, you know, some women take it upon themselves to mentor other women so that they can, um, they can also rise up. And um, there's also, there was also um, proposals around gender parity. How do you make sure that women also uh, participate in shaping the decisions that will impact their lives? And in there, you usually have two views. Some, some feel that, yes, we should, we should bring our chair and sit at the table. Some feel that we should carve our own table. <laughs> if you're not included in the main table, let's carve our, our own table. And um, some think that maybe uh, that table is not at all good for us because uh, we don't want in the mainstream, if the mainstream is based on structural inequalities that shape a system that is fueled with inequalities, we don't want even to sit there. So, um, so there is also. Already, it's us that have privilege to um, mentoring or, or reusing our privilege and our power um, to create that global community amongst other women that may be in certain parts of the world. And I know you work globally, having worked through the UN, that, you know, we may think, you know, in North America, that um, we have privilege, but how are we using our privilege? And what, what duty do we have um, as a global sisterhood, to your point, I like that term, what can we do? And I guess that's always the biggest thing that I think is how is it that my world in Canada um, and your world in Rome, you know, we collide in, in Rome because of a, you know, a women's conference, but then how do we then take that forward to make a difference in, in some way, um, in some far, maybe far reaching or maybe in our backyard or the back door to make a difference with someone that we can mentor? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's, it's very important to, to support women's advocacy platforms mm -hmm. who work on those issues. Um, I think different groups, diverse groups of women are well organized these days. You have all kinds of organization on, on, on many things. You have those that support rural women's economic empowerment. You have organizations of women producers. Um, the cooperatives, the union, the producer organizations. You have organizations of women traders. 
Some try to uh, support uh, business incubation for women in agri-food value chains, uh, whether it is in the fisheries, the forestry, livestock, uh, crops. So, so there is a lot. I think that the uh, women's movement is, is very dynamic. It's, um, it has a strong voice and it can um, support women organizing around their issues so mm -hmm. that at country level, uh, when governments are discussing, for instance, uh, national investment plans for the agri-food sector, I'm just giving an example because of the area of work I'm in, uh, so that those plans would also recognize that the level playing field between women and men is not equal. And that in there, um, they should try and equalize the access to resources, the opportunities, uh, make sure that there's no gender evaporation because usually, you know what happens, there's a lot of problematizing around women's issues. Mm -hmm. You know, you read the situation analysis, there's a lot about, yes, uh, there's discrimination in access to resources, opportunities, services. But when you reach the budget allocation, then there's gender evaporation. And we know that the words only are not enough. If you have the mechanisms and the documents, but you don't put in the resources, it's it's not going very far. So, it's a it's like a fail plan, right? Like you can have all these beautiful bells and whistles, and you know, and but we don't do, we're not doing doing the basics on the ground to 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 deal with all these bells and whistles. It's nothing if you don't have that connectivity, like you said, small things, education, women reading, other women recognizing that you know what? How can I you know in my path help out? And versus saying, well, when we started off the interview, you talked about, I thought we were going to be further off. And, you know, that's what I want to speak to next and how your book plays into this. Okay, 26 years, we made some movement, right? I think there has been change, maybe not as far along as we want to be, Taco. But with your book and for women listening, that they're like, I kind of feel a little bit helpless here, Taco. I want to. I want to do something. I want to make a difference. Like whether you're a female CEO listening to this or a woman that's at home um, thinking I could still give something. What, what words of wisdom would you give to women out there um, that want to help move parity forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think any way we are, there, there is something that we can do. Inaction is not an option. I think um, we can reach out to networks, to groups that we know do good groundwork and they're all present on the net. There is, there is a lot of communication around different um, initiatives that are ongoing. So um, there is really need to invest in the empowerment of women on the ground, whether it is economically, socially, culturally, mm -hmm. it has to be a package. Uh, okay. Sometimes it's not just good enough. We, we can be funding, we do a few economic activities, but the woman is battered at home every day. So mm -hmm. it really um, has to be a systemic approach um people can donate they can donate in different ways to different organizations the book that i've written i'll donate part of the proceeds and there, there are many initiatives the, the win conference you saw that they brought also women from uh, different regions i think it's yes. a fantastic platform that can also uh, contribute uh, to women's uh, empowerment so they, they are different the organizations are there. Mm -hmm. If you need further linkage to what is going on to the ground, we can support that. But they, the organizations doing amazing work on the ground and, and, and 
empowering uh, women every day, especially in rural areas. So tell me, as we wrap up, what is your hopes or your dreams for this book? And how could we help you to achieve that goal? Well, first, <laughs> for me also personally, you know, it's my first ad book. What happened is I, I started painting very casually at home and you know, these apartments, they're not massive. So at some point you reach also to a point where storage even is an issue. So um, so I wanted to turn it into a project, but I wanted a project that I can, I can share with sisters around the world. Because in my 25 years, I've lived in different places and I've made many friendships and sisterhoods for equality. And I wanted it to be a project that bring uh, different groups of women together. So, um, so I think the book is uh, the starting of something new. I, I like this participatory approach and probably um, over the years at the personal level, I want to be in a position where I can go to a community and paint together with women in that community and try and sell it. Um, in the international market and reinvest in that community. So mm -hmm. I, I think moving forward in the long term, that's what I envisage. So this is like my baby steps um, yes. <laughs> to start working towards uh, towards that. Uh, because I, I oh, believe- How oh, beautiful, like to, to go into a community and be immersive, right? Like, I mean, to really, you know, kind of go into the culture. And I would think if I, you know, if I brought you to Trinidad and, you know, you sat around women and, you know, obviously in my culture, like a lot of cultures, we cook and, you know, in Trinidad, we call it liming, but, you know, yeah. you get together and you create a scenario. And then out of that, um, the oh, like you said, um, every woman is a poet. So something comes from, you know, the outpouring from their heart and what an amazing experience that would be, right? Because women naturally, I think of my my best friends and we get together and we naturally do those things. Mm -hmm. But to have something come that gets created out of that, that would be absolutely amazing. That would be, you know, what a what a beautiful thing to even think about um, that you could go, you know, along the way. So for everybody, um, we will have a link to the book. Go buy the book. Connect with Taco if you want um, you know, if you're thinking like Taco says, there's things online and you don't know where to go um, and you, or you're just interested, maybe her being the first place that maybe she comes out and she does one of these um, uh, experiences, please, you know, reach out. So Taco, before I let you go around women's issue, if you can share some of your wisdom about kind of what you do and obviously you know, you're still working, um, you know, internationally with women's issues, but also hunger. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what words of wisdom would you leave with us before you go around uh, the concept of, of um, women's issues? Mm -hmm. I would like to say that probably one of the reasons we are still making very slow progress in ending hunger, in ending malnutrition, in ending uh, poverty, especially in rural areas, is that also we neglect to address gender issues. Because for me, and that's also the advocacy that I, I do in my office, I always tell my colleagues, we cannot talk about nutrition here and gender here. Mm. They are part of the same thing. If you want to be successful in your work, uh, on nutrition, you have to address gender issues because we know, for instance, that a healthy, educated, and well nourished woman, she's a better producer, she's a better investor, and she has healthier children with stronger immune systems who will perform better at school. So to reach your goal of, um, of 
ending malnutrition, for instance, your smartest shortcut is to invest in women and girls. And I picked nutrition, but it is the same for poverty. It is the same for hunger. It is the same for many other challenges. Thank you. Well, thank you, Taco. Like, what a what amazing work. Like the fact that somebody like you and so many others in the world are doing it is it's so important, right? And what am I taking away? I guess I'm taking away that um, we have come, but we need to work more together as a global community and really as as so much we have so many privileged not men but also women but also men that are listening that that could be alongside us so um, reach out to someone um, volunteer mentor um, if you don't know much about the issues read it up go to the the UN site, um, we will have some links in here that uh, Taka will also give to us um, to educate yourself about what is it that you can, you know, do so that our future generations are better um, equipped with a bit more than what has happened, like Taka said, in the last uh, 26 years. And um, go out there and make a difference in whatever way. It does not have to, it could be in your community helping out um, with like you said, um, going out to give a hot meal to, you know, giving back a bit of what your expertise is to another woman somewhere. And um, we need to give back in order to grow together. So now, Taco, thanks so much. The link, like I said, for the book is um, will be in the show notes. Please, Taco, if they need to get a hold of you, um, where would you like people to connect with you? I will give you my address where people can reach me um, on different okay. social media platforms as well. So I would All right. appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks so much again, everyone. Um, what an inspiring conversation. Um, I look forward to connecting again. And if you're needing to get connected with me around um, authentic heart leaderships, you can go to roxanderhodge.com forward slash quiz. There's a little mini quiz you can do and we'll send you a mini report. Again, thanks again. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for tuning in to Authentic Living with Roxanne, creating the space for positive, healthy change. Roxanne is a keynote speaker, psychotherapist, and coach. To work with Roxanne, visit roxannederhage.com slash blueprint. We'll see you next time on Authentic Living with Roxanne.